so wonderful to see all of you again this Thursday. It is 21st uh, March 2024. And as usual, every Thursday we meet for a Bible study. Remember, we are addressing the issues of doctrine. And of course, the doctrinal matters are very heavy. They are very wide. They carry too much. There's a lot that is carried uh, within the scope of these doctrine, doctrinal matters. So for today, the theme is on building solid faith foundations. That is our theme tonight. And we are picking this theme from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Remember, these are the ones of Jesus Christ as he was trying to, you know, communicate to people the importance of being founded family in terms of faith, in terms of their place in God. Are we together? Remember from the beginning, from the book of Ephesians, we saw that one of the reasons as to why people get tossed to and fro and back and forth and they are carried by every word of doctrine, it is because of their immaturity. They have no foundation. Now, when you have foundation, it means there is a place you stand. You own a certain place of authority. You are an authority in a certain area. You know, having foundation is having authority. It's having authority. It's being in a position to have a place you can stand. Authority free. There is a place that you cannot be moved. Remember Jesus uh, telling Martha that whatever you are doing is fine. Thinking about my stomach. But Mary has chosen a place that nobody can snatch from her. So there are places in the kingdom that you should stand. There are places that I call authoritative grounds that once you locate those places and you stand, you cannot be moved. If it comes to the time of getting married, you know, get married as a believer, you become a family man, a family woman as a believer. You will not be moved. When it comes to the issue of getting a job, looking for a job, you will not be compromised, you know. Uh, for instance, and sorry my sisters for giving this kind of an example, but you become victims of circumstances so much when it comes to like issues of promotion, issues of getting a job, or maybe you want certain help, including from servants of God. So you realize that sometimes men would, will put you into places of bad compromise, that if you need this promotion, you must sleep with me. If you need this kind of efforts, you must sleep with me. Now, when you are well-founded in a place of authority, at uh, that time you cannot be compromised easily because there is what you stand for. Are we together? There is what you stand for. So that is why it is very important. You know, beginning as a believer, remaining as a believer, and finishing as a believer, it takes a hand of God and it also takes your commitment, your dedication, and where you stand. All right? It's okay. I agree. Sometimes, because we are all coming from different backgrounds, depending with the kind of foundations that was put, uh, you know, when we started becoming Christians. And I know that some of us are from weak foundations others from stronger foundations but there are people who are founded very very strongly all right um right now because you are a believer and there are things that you know that probably your parents didn't have that dimension of revelation your children will be different they should actually be different because there are things that you didn't know but god by his grace he has helped you to understand and know those things of the kingdom. Meaning, some areas of ignorance that your parents ignored, at least you know those areas for you. You will not allow your children 
to move in that ignorance. Why? God has opened your eyes very early. There are things you can see. There are things you can discern. I mean, there are things that already you know this is right, this is wrong. So depending with your foundation, that is the place where your children should begin. You are teaching them faith very early. Maybe you are never taught faith when you are growing up, brothers and sisters in the Lord. You should not start the same level where your parents started. I believe by this time, God by His grace has helped you to understand things. The mix-up of doctrines that they carried until they caused too much confusion. It is taking you a lot of time to detox yourself from too much. That is not what you should be now uh, bringing back to your children. No other foundation that can anyone lay. You can see that very well from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verses 11. Paul said that for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 11. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. And that is why um, cults, false doctrines, this is where they mess people because they come up with like another way of understanding God outside his word, outside the Holy Spirit inspiration, outside the counsel of God. And they are trying to bring out another way. You cannot know God outside his word. It is, is one that directs us towards him. I want to talk about foundations and how uh, we can be able to build solid faith foundations. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 to 27. Listen to what the Bible says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall. Because it had its foundation on the rock. So what made this house to stand in short? It is not the ceiling. It is not any other part of that building. It is its foundation. Foundation. So, foundation is what defines everything. If you are lost today as a believer who claims to follow Jesus Christ, check your foundation. Verses 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, the issues of practice is coming, is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Just remember that the fact that this man built a house on the sand, that did not prohibit the house from being built. Even his house was well built. It went up and it was completed. But listen, the testing of the times, verses 27. The rain again came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Mm -hmm. So this is a story of two builders. And from the Jesus version, these two builders have been called two names. One, the wise builder. Two, the foolish builder. So the key, the key things that we can extract from these uh, scriptures. One is the type of builders. And what is making one builder to be wise and the other one to be foolish is because of when he started building, he had to first of all dig down to touch the rock. Okay? So what is making him wise? He foresaw something coming. Because what is this that is making this person to dig deep 
and touch the rock first which is going to cost him more money it is going to cost him more strength and more labor it is going to cost him more time what about resources like patience what about resources like you know some consultation with engineers going down is not easy he is digging fast instead of going up yes what he is building should go up but he is beginning by fast going down there is a price that this man is paying there is a price to pay if you have to put the correct foundation and i want to tell you laying the correct foundation even in your faith sometimes when you are digging you'll be going against resistance you'll be going against some foundations that probably you had before and that you have probably rested on and thought maybe you had all what it takes to be a believer because some of the foundations that some of us have here i want to tell you they can't carry another generation it is not even enough to carry our own children they are already not able to be carried by the foundation that we have if they can't even carry our own family some of our families are hurting they are yet to get deliverance healing salvation from somebody who is going to rise in that family empowered by god baptized with the holy ghost ready to pay the price until this family is recovered and restored but where is that person this person is very scarce there is no foundation that was laid in you that can cause you to get the trigger that i can stand a time such as this and be like the joseph of my family foundation issues the building that you've built cannot house people during the stormy weather during the rainy weather that time when the winds are beating that house will be risky you cannot house you cannot accommodate anyone you actually feel and like like you people don't rely on me i can fall any time please don't trust me and you know there is a certain level where people have to walk with your faith for them to activate their own there are levels that people have to use your confidence for them to to propagate their own confidence there are levels that before people know and believe that there is the baptism of the holy spirit they need to see you baptized with power they need to see jesus in you remember acts chapter 4 verses 13 when they saw peter and john and realized that they were common men from the village and an educated they marveled why did they marvel they not marvel because of the level of illiteracy is because of how these guys were so illiterate but when they looked at what they are doing it they can't match it can't match completely not matchable the kind of a miracle they have performed who used to stay outside the church building who cannot stand who cannot walk running people entered the church they left him there doctors entered the church they left him there rich men entered the church they left him there still a defeated man but this an educated local man they said we don't have man like the guys who have just passed by here i know billionaires have just entered the church we don't even have silver and we don't have the gold they have we are broke but not in terms of faith there is something that we carry that we can give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk so the guy received total healing total restoration he stood up and the bible says that he followed them in the church mhm now there are people who need to see something to follow now if your foundation is so weak that there is nothing that you can show remember you are helping the devil to continue dominating your family this person who is digging to first of all locate the rock he is paying a heavy price 
some of us there are things that have not been seen in our family because nobody was ready to dig those who went ahead they just laid the building on the sand because laying it on the sand there is no price to pay it is easy lay it there in one week the building is complete that time when you are completing the one who is trying to look for the lock even in two weeks he has not even started building why he wants to make sure that the foundation is sure and firm now this rock in this sense is jesus christ you know so after finding the rock and that is the rule of building even in kenya and i think all over the world you need to dig deep until the topsoil is gone and find the rock because there are things that you will never stop the winds will come and the climate will just be behaving normal not because it's targeting your building no it is the nature behaving its way heavy rain will fall not because they are targeting to bring you down not even because they are testing your building no it is the nature in its behavior floods will come and flow not because of you it is the, it is nature it is nature i mean there are things ahead of your life waiting ahead there are times when it will come when there is no money and you've got other avenues that can compromise your life can compromise even your integrity and give you money but because of the foundation of faith that you have in Christ Jesus you will say no and wait for God to come in his own way and you know what i have heard testimonies sisters i have heard testimonies of people who have been lifted by God single handedly without having to compromise it works and it is working even in our time you know the testing must come people will come and hate you sometimes for nothing that time because you said you want to be an apostle like me because you said you want to be a prophet or a prophetess because you decide to be a pastor you decide to be an evangelist can you be able to preach to people who hate you because it is possible that some of the people that you will be leading they actually hate you <laughs> those are moments of testing depends with your foundation if it was laid behold hatred that doesn't matter how people will despise you it will never stop you from doing the will of god then you need to stand so the wise one took time took time now there are people who are so much in a hurry you want it to happen tomorrow can i tell you the truth even god will not allow some things to happen by tonight as much as you need a nugget miracle there are things that god will allow you to go through the process because it is through that process that god is building in you some new character that is when god is pruning some habits you know that is when god is working on a lot of attitudes in your life do you know god is so much interested in how many years you will keep what is going to give you than just that thing happening to you that miracle coming is very easy for god to do it but for how long will that thing communicate is canceled it is more important to him about that than the miracle itself coming that time so for you all you need is oh god this fire is too much please bring that miracle yes god knows that the miracle will be you know some of you god is preparing you to be great men and women today you might not know exactly what is happening but give yourself 5 years some of you it could even be the end of this year some of you it could be sooner than i am speaking it others in 10 years time you become movers movers of africa movers of the world movers of kenya movers of your village movers of the cities you know national movers but god knows very well for you to become that you cannot become that in the version that you are today not in the version that your family brought you up in because it doesn't carry that capacity to hold what god wants to do there is a need for a foundation to be done and you know what because you're saying that god come and lift me up then it's like your life started going now downwards 
God is laying a foundation because he wants you to impact the next five generations and in your current version it is not possible it is not possible but God knows very well he has no problem in making you what you've always desired he has no problem in absolutely bringing everything to an end even instantly but what kind of a, a you will you be to him it matters a lot it matters a lot can, can you can you really become a prime minister like joseph and when your people come and they are in trouble and they are the ones who sold you can, can you afford to call them without bitterness and say come come to egypt i am now in power i am in command eh hakuna njaa hapa this place there is no famine come here eat and drink live in the palace and your brothers and sisters come and they see you and you don't remember again the pain all you can see is at this position i can only help but not revenge some of you what you are asking for yes it is correct but you are not ready to pay the price there is a foundation to lay there is a, god is more interested with foundation than the building i tell you now god is interested with foundation more than the building the building anybody can build even the one who laid it on the sand he was able to build and finish and people started you know using that house and for some time it worked but there came a day when nature started behaving its way you know are we together so and i want you to be very discerning so that you know the difference between when the devil is fighting you and when god is laying foundation okay i think that's an area i need to expound more i don't know whether i do it now or in the next bible study but i'm going to give some tips on that the bible says that the blessing of god and that no solo meaning god cannot prosper you today and that prosperity becomes a trap for your downfall then that was not godly because the plan of god is for you to become a blessing until possibly people can even bless themselves through your blessings all right there are people with the companies that have employed thousands and thousands of people so what has happened people are blessing themselves through the blessings of those those guys you know so when the devil is delaying and when the devil is fighting when it is not about the foundation you will know you will know the intention of satan is always to steal to kill and destroy so when the devil is doing these things there is killing it is very merciless but when you are going through issues and god is in it there is always a moment of peace when something has god in it there is always a divine endurance and divine peace peace against the peace that you should actually be expecting <laughs> i don't know whether you understand uh i was talking to some people somewhere in our office today and they were telling me that we are going through tough times but for reasons we don't know we are at peace and i told them if this is what you are going through and you are at peace then it is not demonic and just in case the devil is in it god is aware and god will use this season to make sure that you become the best there are things then that god wants to do so that he can shame the devil once and for all there are moments that god will allow the devil to do things his way i'm saying allowing not sending allowing he knows the devil is trying to interfere with his people but god will allow the devil and the devil will look as if he is winning but then god knows that i wanted this guy to meet to, to reach his climax like the way he reached in the days of job let him reach his climax and i'm going to destroy him permanently in the life of this sister in the life of this brother there will be no traces that there was such a thing happening in their lives i was saying that there is a price to pay for the correct foundation to be laid 
Mm. So there is digging. There is digging. There is digging. So this man had all the time digging. And the Bible says that uh, the rain came down and the streams rose. So when he got to the rock, he started now building. And the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. That is Matthew 7 verses 25. Now, the reason as to why this building did not come down is not because of the stones that built it. Okay? It is not because of the, the stones that built it. It is because of its foundation where it was built the foundation foundation makes the difference some of us are uh, we need to deal with foundations our foundations cannot carry us far our foundations will allow us to have money but temporary prosperity because we have not been able to overcome the demons that restricted our family if it's a marriage, you realize there are so many, um, you know, patterns of divorce in probably your family or even from the village you come from. There are patterns. What are you waiting for? What have you done to deal with that foundation? Because if you see something happening, then it has a place where it depicts its strength from. There is a place that feeds it with power, with strength. There is a foundation to break. Mm -hmm. God does not bless you this year and then next year you become a pauper. If that is a trend, probably there is a foundation that needs to be broken. That carries demonic influences as far as finances are concerned in your life. You know, sometimes you can be making a lot of money. But when you look back, there is nothing that you can see and say, okay, I don't have money, but I, at least I have this thing. What are you holding? What can you show? What is it that you can really say, I did not just come here to exist and survive, but I am making progress in life. Because some battles that you are fighting, you are fighting battles that are picking their strength and power from their foundations. So what you need is to break that evil foundation, is to deal with the foundation. So foundation is very important. Some of us are too much in a hurry to become tycoons. We, want, we are so much in a hurry to achieve things very quickly. Probably some of us have got the wrong reasons. We want to impress so and so. We want to, you know, outdo so and so. We want somebody to to just know that uh, we are not what they thought we were. It's not for any proof. But in the next 10 years, will you still be talking about that success? Will you still be talking about uh, that victory? So foundation is very important. How you do things, very important. Some of us, we are not committed, you know, to even finding time of our very own that can help our lives, that we may have a firm foundation that believes and trusts in God. You can easily find yourself consulting a witch doctor or a diviner somewhere. Because somebody saying that that person is healing God, you know, he, 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 can, he can give you the, the star and tell you what is troubling you. Some of us, we are so weak that we are even reading from the newspapers what the star is talking about us. What is the star advising today about my life? Things from men, things from marine spirit and the spirits of the air. We are consulting with those things. Why? Our foundation is a problem. He feared paying the price. On the swell, he built the house. That one, even the city council, the county government, the engineers, even in Kenya, they can't allow such a building to continue. And that's why the city engineers have to come and inspect buildings. At the beginning, at the foundation stage, they must make sure that you have mixed all the ratios correctly. 
so that the foundation is not compromised. An engineer must come to verify that there is no compromise with that. So some of us have compromised life so much. But you know what? God is speaking to me and you. Maybe it's time now to go back and probably check your foundations and lay the foundation correctly. It is possible that you discover later that maybe you've gone too far but on the wrong foundation. Knowing well that there will be a time when there will be France, knowing well that there will be a time when the rain will beat, the winds will beat, there will be an earthquake coming. What should you do as a wise person? You now need to count the rows of bringing down that building, lay the foundation, and start well. Hallelujah. Some of the doctrines that we have carried, they are just religious. They are just denominational things. They have totally nothing to do with the rock Jesus Christ. They are just emotional things that have been, you know, crafted through the wisdom of men. They don't carry any kingdom interest in them. They just make us feel comfortable and feel good. They just make us to feel that we are Christians, we are believers, we are church goers, we belong to a church, not the church of Jesus Christ. Yet, we still hold on to them and we want to plant our coming generation on the same things knowing well that they have not worked for us and we hope that they will work for them. If they can't work, it will never work. For you to lay a foundation and start strong, you must be very intentional. Hallelujah. I know this is a difficult one, but you have to. You have to. Now, let me uh, give you some strategies that can help you to start building a firm foundation for yourself in faith, for your faith, and also for your life as someone that God has ordained victory ahead of time. So, you need to have regular attention to your spiritual health. You should know when it is declining. You should know when it is stagnating. You should know when it is growing. So you must. And remember, all this depends with what are you feeding on. You know, what are you feeding on? We know there are people who can still feed but suffer from marasmus. Others, scurvy. You know, because there are some nutritions that are not uh, present. And so these people do not get uh, enough strength, enough nutrients to make them the kind of men and women, you know, who should be able to resist sicknesses and diseases. So you realize that when people are weak, they are so much prone to sicknesses and diseases. This is the same thing which with the spiritual growth. Without regular uh, attention, feeding, and all along trying to do some audit, uh, it might not work out for you. Now, strategy number one, you need to have your own definition of what you'll call your spiritual growth and the kind of foundation that you want to lay. By developing faith, all the time ask yourself questions. Am I really developing my faith? Am I walking the correct faith? Because some of us, the items that we carry, they have made us to be very docile when it comes to the issues of faith and very lazy and ignorant because we think, because we are having this kind of a thing and we are told that it carries the power, I don't need to pray, I don't need to fast, I don't need to read the Bible, I am covered. You are not covered. Make a very intentional strategy for your spiritual growth and maturity. Lay a foundation. Read the Bible. Probably you need to change the way you, you carry out your day. Why don't you probably set up and say, even if it is not daily, maybe in a week, the kind of messages that you want to listen so that they can feed your spirit, feed you with wisdom. Maybe you want to grow your mental capacity eh, through inspirations of men of God. If you don't have a place to get such, you can consult me. I know I can get you such. You need to probably to, to share with others, you know, share with more mature Christians for you in your network. You don't have anybody who fears God. All your friends are ready to compromise anytime. How will you ever grow spiritually? How will you ever lay a foundation that is strong? You've nobody to challenge you what you're doing is wrong. 
Actually, you are the one who silences all of them. Yet, you want to grow, yet you can't. You must audit yourself and begin a strategy for uh, your spiritual growth. Define it the way you'd want it to look like and you'll see yourself grow. Commit yourself to it. All right? Number two thing, you need to make growth a priority. Make sure you are not stagnating. So spiritual growth will always come when we set specific time. You know, we need to develop a specific plan for spending time with God. That time can be time of prayer. That time can be time of Bible study. That time can be a time of you have an audio message, audio Bible reading. So you you are somewhere you, you can put like the book of John chapter 1 and you say I'll listen to five chapters and make sure you don't dose. You have a lot of discipline and you follow it through until uh, your spirit begins to rise again. You know, you begin to grow. You will hear things that you didn't know exist in the Bible. And some of them will communicate the solution to the kind of problem that you've always struggled to find solution. Number three, because of time, you need to set a personal goal for yourself. Goals that we set for ourselves are more motivating than goals that someone else sets for you. So you, you need to write goals, probably maybe even on a paper. Place them somewhere. It could be on the door. It could be on your laptop. A place that will always remind you in the morning, in the afternoon. You know, you can set a goal and say every afternoon, uh, I'll now be going for lunch hour service to hear the preaching. That's a goal. Maybe I'll be listening to a preaching for 15 minutes. You know, I'll be reading the Bible. Uh, maybe you look for a book. Maybe you don't even have a Christian book that you are reading. Probably you might read the book and say how to grow spiritually. People like Dagon Mills have got very nice books that help people to grow and mature up and have the correct foundation in God. And for both their spiritual life, holistically, they are able to pick up their lives. All right? Now, strategy number four, uh, number four I'd want to give you is identifying the key resources that you need to make those things that you are deciding, the goals that you want to achieve to work, you know? Probably you are in a marriage and you want to know more about marriage and relationship. Why don't you look for nice books like, or the messages like people like Joyce Meyer, who has gone through hell and back in the marriage. And she's a great example of uh, people that you can say they have demonstrated that marriage can work what come, what, uh, you know, come what may, that it is possible. They have been able to survive storms of marriage. You know, they, they are able to change people's attitudes. Joyce Mayer, a very good person who can help you, uh, you know, to, to, to develop yourself in the area of marriage and relationship. You know, they she really brings it out with a lot of possibilities. Some people are being overcome by attitudes in life. Some of those attitudes is what you got from your family background. So it's not easy for you to break them down. They need both prayer. They need both inspiration from someone else. They need both counsel. They need accountability. You know, all those things. So Joyce Mayer's messages are very good messages that uh, can help you in the areas of attitude, areas of emotional balance and character, relationships, all those things. All right. And of course, many others. If you want to improve in wisdom, in the kingdom way, people like Miles Munro are there. Listen to Miles Munro content about business, about money, about everything that you can really think about. Strategy number five is develop accountability. Now, some of you are not accountable to anyone. You say that you are accountable to God. Even God put people to be accountable to other people. Jesus Christ developed 12 disciples. They were accountable to him. The Bible says they had also disciples. The disciples had also their own disciples. So you must be accountable. Some of you are not accountable to anyone. Nobody can correct you. Nobody can guide you. You say that you are reading a Bible. I am also accountable. You must be accountable. All right? So it's good to, to know who can I be accountable to. Please, there are people who say I can't trust anyone. My friend, there are still people that God has set apart who can be trusted. It's you who is not committed to know who can I, you know, submit to for accountability. People who are not accountable to anyone. There is a spiritual 
uh, dimension of life that they, they will never grow in, they will remain in the air. They, they don't really develop also accountability where other people can be accountable under them. And they become like vagabonds. There is a lot of helter skelters here and there. So develop accountability and that one is going to help you very much. Strategy number six, do evaluation periodically. So now and then, you need to revise the goals that you set earlier. Go back to them. See, am I reading the scripture? I said every morning I should start with a scripture. Every day I must read one chapter of the Bible. You know, I, every week I must listen to uh, one wisdom, any message that inspires wisdom. Two, any message that inspires deep spiritual things, spiritual matters that are very deep. Maybe you need Arome Osai for that, Apostle Arome Osai, who is very good in that inspiration. Maybe you need a doctrine balance. People like Joshua Selman, who are able to maybe release that dimension better. Maybe you need issues to deal with attitude and difficult situations in life. People like Joyce Meyer. I mean, ever read yourself, have I watched them? Have I listened to them? Maybe Pastor Ken's messages, they inspire me this way. They are there on YouTube, Pastor Ken Nyaga. And others, of course, you need that. So, evaluate yourself. See where you are making it, where you are failing, and see how you can now adjust and change. Number seven, mentor others. For you to be accountable, you must also have other people that you are putting, you know, accountability. They are there, you are mentoring them. They are giving you pressure to remain on the track. You know very well, if I don't achieve here, I will, I will you know, uh, affect these people. They are watching me. They are looking at me. And when you start practicing mentorship on others, you also realize that you are growing and you are becoming more responsible. And one of the things that sometimes causes people not to get to the next level of growth and maturity and having the correct foundation is when they are being mentored but they have they have nobody to mentor nobody else below them there is no one no one else when you start raising you also start rising so it's good to enlist someone to be your spiritual property mentee invest yourself in that person you know share spiritual issues with them make sure you always have something that you can leave them with something inspirational you know something about Jesus you know you, you you can tell them how God is giving you encounters you know share with them how you started hearing the voice of God share with them the first time when you encountered the Juric ministration so all these things will help you to become uh, somebody that will grow and your foundation will be coming stronger all the time stronger and stronger and stronger so make these things very very intentional we are called to move beyond basic and the introduction levels of faith and rise up high we need to be very consistent when we begin it we don't stop it and when we continue with it we are growing in it we are not just there stagnant we are growing in it so continuous spiritual growth and laying the correct foundation requires connection with god and always being consistent in doing that so let us pray now and god bless you father in the name of jesus thank you so much lord for bringing in these people into this bible uh, fellowship this uh, day my father i declare in the name of jesus may everyone that you have spoken to us come with power and might so that jehovah god we can be molded and even find the rock that our foundation may begin there so that in future, the things that happen in the universe will not disrupt us or even stop us. I commit my brothers and sisters in your hands. I ask you, Lord, to raise them up. Those who have no way, Lord, of getting started, by your wisdom and mercy, get them started, my Father. Anyone who has been impacted in any way, and some people, my Father, here, they have just felt that it's like a new beginning being set for them. I declare in Jesus' name, may you help them to rise up in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless all your lives and I declare in the name of Jesus, may you begin to rise. May your strategies work for you. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.